Good morning, everyone. Hi, those out there in um, Zoom land. And uh, hi to everyone here. We're going to pray and then we'll get into God's word. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come and gather together, uh, both here physically and also online. And the reason we come is because of you, Lord. Um, we are here because you decided to take on human form and you, you were born and you lived amongst your creation and then you died for your creation. And the effect of that has reached us here and, uh, and impacted our lives. So I ask that you help us to hear you. I ask that you help us to, to take to heart what it is you want to say to each one of us so that we can be people who bring glory and honour to you, who can make you smile by the way we live. So I thank you for what you have done, but also thank you for what you're doing right now and you will do in the future. Really give you praise and give you the honour because you so deserve it. Amen. Uh, today we're getting back into the, and I'll just, whoops, do one of those. Whoops, oh, that was too quick off the mark. Uh, we're getting back into our reboot series, uh, Rebooting My Faith. Um, and this week we're going to be looking at stewardship and uh, the, the next week, which is the last one that in this series, will be on self-care. Now, just a, a quick recap, we, uh, we uh, as already been mentioned, we get up there and uh, started looking at reading um, God's Word. You know, how do we reboot that? How do, you know, is there ways in which uh, we might need to change the way that we explore God's Word um, to, in order to, to actually be able to deepen our relationship with God, uh, with Jesus? It, it wasn't just about, you know, well, how do I learn more? It's about how do I deepen my relationship? And, and looking at maybe ways in which we can do that and be, and there's a whole lot of creative uh, ways. We can listen to the word. We can, you know, we can see the word. We can explore uh, a whole range of different uh, options there. Uh, we could read God's word. If you've read this God's word in one translation, for the last you know, 10 years, uh, have a go at maybe reading it in a different translation. Uh, it, it, it can be amazingly helpful uh, just to hear how it's be slightly differently worded uh, and just to, to actually get a better understanding of what God is saying uh, because language does change over time. So that was, that was the first one we looked at. And then uh, we looked at our prayer life and uh, just a reminder that... Um, we can easily fall into the trap of talking to God and not doing much listening to God. That the prayer is actually meant to be this conversation uh, between me and God. It's a, it's a two-way thing. Uh, if you've ever had someone who just talks at you all the time, um, it, it's, it, it, that's really not a, a, a conversation. It, it's, it's, you know... It doesn't feel an us in this. It's like, you know, yep, you're, you're just, you know, I could, I could put up a cut up out of my, you know, cardboard cut out of myself and plonk it down there and go off and, you know, you know maybe, you know, cook up some eggs and bacon and have a nice meal and then come back and still be going, uh huh, uh huh. And it wouldn't have really made a difference because we're not having that conversation. And we can, we can fall into the trap of doing that with God, where we're going, God, I need you this, I need that, da, 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 and we just, <laughs> we, we're just talking to God rather than, and then we don't go and get God, but hang on, what is it you want to say? So we, we need, prayer needs to be that two-way conversation. And God will speak to us, and he will speak to us through reminding us of Scripture. He will speak to us through Scripture. He will speak to us through conversations we may have with someone. Uh, and you would just go, oh, that's your answer, God. Um, you know, so there's this two ways. Finding a way to enrich my prayer life was the, uh, the second one in the series. So this one is rebooting uh, uh, my faith in the area of stewardship. 
Now, stewardship or being a steward is not a common phrase or word that we use uh, unless you're probably used to cruising, you know, traveling on boats. You know, you, you might remember that. That was that thing we did when we, we would, you know, get on a, a, you know, a ship and we would go to such exotic and, uh, places, maybe like, you know, New Zealand or, um, you know, Perth or even, you know, you know, I say Europe, you know, we, we could do that. And on that ship, there would be stewards and they would be there to care for your needs, which is, you know, you know, I would love to have one at home. You know, that'd be wonderful. You know, um, I have a wife. I don't have a steward. But stewards were servants not wives, servants, and they were usually slaves. Again, not wives, but yeah. They were usually uh, servants who were put in charge of managing actually the household affairs and keeping the family order uh, in, in the household. Um, scripture tells us, now one of the great things is that scripture tells us that uh, the, the owner of our household, which is God, by the way, because you know, he's the head of the family, and provider of all, all creation, he actually gets up there and uses stewards. In other words, he puts people in places, uh, a position of leadership to provide for the family and the community and the vulnerable in society. You know, and we are often, we are actually being called to be good stewards of what we've been entrusted with. Now, a great example of that, of course, in the Old Testament is someone who's made a steward of a whole household. This is not a rhetorical. Thank you. I was, yeah. Ooh, I was getting a bit worried there. I, I, I must admit, it has been a little while since I've asked a rhetorical question. Oh, well, not a question, but anyway. Uh, Joseph, yeah. He, he, he is this Hebrew slave who's first put in charge of his master's household. Uh, and, you know, and he actually states, look, my master has given me everything. Is you know, has been placed in my care. And... Uh, and you, as his wife, are the only thing that is off limits, as it were. Uh, and uh, but he's still got into trouble. But eventually, he's then made the steward of the whole country of Egypt. And Pharaoh says, no one but myself will be above your authority. You know? And so he was there to manage the affairs and the household, uh, or both the household initially and then the nation, and to care for the people. Now, Jesus also talks about, as in Matthew 25, of uh, three servants, the story of three servants, uh, about an example, which is an example of good versus bad stewardship, you know, of what we do with what's entrusted with us. You know, the, the idea that if God has entrusted us with something and we bury it is not a good idea. But if we use it and make, you know, to be more productive, then that is a good idea. So being a steward is not just about faithfully managing finances. Um, you know, if you've, with that word stewardship, you may have gone, oh, this is going to be a talk about money, you know, because that's usually a more modern uh, approach to it. Um, but it, it involves so much more than that. Uh, it's about faithfully managing my time. It's about faithfully managing the things that I have and faithfully managing my own life as well. Because don't forget, we've been given that by God. Uh, that's been entrusted to us to use for his glory and uh, in, for his purposes. So we need to be good stewards of what we have been given. Now, one person who got the idea of being a good steward, I mean, he, he's not perfect, um, and which is Good because I don't. Nope, still haven't seen anyone who's perfect yet. So that's good. Uh, I'm in good company. Um, is King David? He understood being a good steward. In the prayer that Lindsay read out to us, uh, David's prayer is concerning the building of the temple and his son Solomon, and he wants his son to be a good steward of what he's been entrusted with. And just to summarize up his prayer, he gets up there and says, look, 
God is worthy of praise uh, because of his power and because of his majesty. You know, uh, you know, he starts with this very clear image of who God is. And, and then he acknowledges an important truth. Uh, and this is something that I think that we, we here, especially in the West, need to learn. God owns everything. Now, we can say that, but to actually get that is a bit different. Because you can, we can say, yep, God owns everything, and then go off and do what I want, rather than go, well, if God owns everything, uh, and everything I have, and like in King David's case saying, uh, even though I'm a king, I, I know that everything I have has come from God. There's nothing that I've created that's sort of somehow extra to what God owns. Um, you know, it's not a case of, God, this is yours and this is mine. It's a case of, God, this is yours and also this is yours. And uh, by the way, that's yours as well. The I. The idea, the concept, the, the need to really grasp the fact that everything we have is God's means that we then think about everything we have differently. Because if we go, this is God's, what am I going to do with it? He reminds, he goes on to remind his listeners that... Um, by the way, you know, don't forget life is short. Um, and we and the things that we think are going to matter, they, they won't last forever. In fact, Scripture tells us that God is going to eventually renew everything. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, don't hang on too tight to things because they won't last. Um, you know, and he just puts that reminder. I love how he does that. He just puts that reminder in there. By the way, yeah, you know, life's short. You know, don't think it's going to be here forever. And then he goes on and points out an all-important attitude that we need to have with God. If we're going to have this attitude of, of serving God and, and using the things around us, we need to make sure that our motives and our hearts are right because guess what? God's going to examine them. Uh, you know, God's going to know what our heart is. And so if we want to be good servants, good stewards of, God, of what God has entrusted us with, then we need to make sure we are in that right relationship with him. And we can do that. And I love how David ends it by, by simply showing how we can do that. And that is to ask God for help. I, I love, this is one of the great, crazy things about Christian faith, is that God says, I want you to do this. You won't be able to do it by yourself, but I want you to do this. And the way you do that is ask me for help to do what I want you to do. And so at the end of his prayer, he is asking God to help the people to stay obedient and help his son complete the task that he's been entrusted with, which is to build the temple. Having a look at David's prayer there in, in 1 Chronicles 29 uh, it is a really good thing to do. So you haven't done it uh, in a while, uh, Go back and have a read of that prayer and just think it through and look at what he's been saying there and what he's, what he's praying and, and his attitude to God. It's actually a really good uh, sort of mindset uh, when we come to think about being a good steward of what God has given us. Now, jumping over to the conversation that Jesus had uh, with his disciples uh, that Claudia read out for us, we, we find some really good advice about being... Uh, good stewards. And by the way, it's not surprising it's good advice because this is Jesus speaking. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you want good advice, go listen to what Jesus has to say. And, his, and as part of Jesus' teaching in Luke 12 about being prepared for the Lord's coming, um, he's asked whether the illustration that he used uh, applied just for the disciples. Peter says, is that just for me or is that for everyone? Now, I'm not sure whether Peter's going, Lord, are you just talking to me or are you talking to everyone else here as well? Because I kind of feel like you might be talking to me, Lord. Um, 
what? I don't know why Peter decided to raise the question. But in typical fashion, <laughs> Jesus answers, the, answers this with an illustration. I mean, it's, it wasn't, yes, Peter, it's you, or no, Peter, it's for everyone. Uh, yeah, Jesus' response is with an, another illustration. And it's to describe a steward. Now, I know the New Living Translation there uses the word servant. However, the Greek word there that is used is actually the one used to describe someone who's in charge of running a household. It, it's, it's, it's not just the sort of a servant. This is the, the, uh, this is the person in charge, the steward of the house. And, and he says that a faithful, sensible steward is one who can be given responsibility to manage the household. Now, if we're thinking about how, you know, well, what do I maybe need to do with the stuff that I've been entrusted with? Do I need to be rethinking about what I've been entrusted with? Is, is there maybe uh, things that I haven't really allowed God to grab hold of and, and use for his purposes? And I need to re rethink, reboot my thinking about this. Uh, one of the things is that we actually have to be, uh, be in a place where we are being faithful to God's teaching and we're being sensible in how we're dealing with the things God is entrusting us in order to be entrusted with them in the first place. Understand what I'm trying to say? You won't be entrusted with things unless you're going to be a faithful steward and unless you're going to be sensible with what you've been entrusted with. So God is not going to give lots to those that are going to be unfaithful and be, be not sensible with what is used. Part of the outcome, though, is if we are good stewards with what we have been given, um, it, we actually then have been blessed with the ability to access more of God's household. He says, you know, a faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. Now, Jesus is talking here about leadership. It's, there's a bit of a leadership issue going here. But it's actually, since we're all priests, by the way, you know, we're the priesthood of believers, there's a sense that this applies to us all. If the master returns and finds that servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. And, you know, when I first read that, I went, oh, okay. And the reward is, I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all his own. You know, it's sort of like, yeah, you're doing a really good job here. I'm now going to make you responsible for everything else. Um, but when you think about that, that our master is God, this is the saying is God is going to allow you to have access to so much more. So much more. And in many ways, it reflects the story of the servants. You know, those who did well were then given so much more to look after. So we need to be faithful to God, faithful to his teachings. That's the first place that we start if we're going to reboot how we deal with what we've been entrusted with. And we need to be sensible with it. You know, that's where we start. But Jesus warns. I pointed the wrong way. I pointed at the screen there. But Jesus puts in this but. Yeah. If a servant, and actually the word there, Greek word, is for servant or slave. If the servant or slave use, um, misuses the trust that they've been given to them, firstly, they will be caught out. It says, my master, if the servant thinks my master won't be back for a while, you know, he, be, and he begins beating other servants and he's partying. I'm going to use all this and, I'm, and gets drunk. Um, <laughs> well, guess what? It's going to get caught. Jesus is saying, you're going to get caught. The master will return unannounced and unexpected. And the second thing that's going to happen is then you're going to be punished. And it's here, it's, you know, 
it is gruesome in punishment, isn't it? You know, cut into pieces and banish him with the unfaithful. Um, you know, you're kicked out. Uh, because that's going to be the consequence of not being a faithful, sensible steward with what's entrusted to you. The warning I get out of this is that we need to make sure we don't buy into the idea that what I do doesn't matter. Uh, that our master doesn't really care how I use what I've been entrusted with. That I can freely use what I've been given for my own pleasure. That's what happened here. You know, went partying, got in, getting drunk. He, you know, is using the, res, the responsibilities and the things he'd be entrusted with for his own pleasure. And so, therefore, I've got challenged with the question, well, what am, what am I doing with the things that God has entrusted me with? Not just the financial things that I've got, but with my time. How, how am I using my time? Um, it, um, you know, and I must admit, I have to put my hand up. I don't think I'm using it as well as I should. I want to be sensible. Uh, you could ask, Faye, I'm one of those people that tends to go from one extreme to the other. You know, um, I, you know, I want to, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm, I'm sort of not moving that far. But you know, as as quickly from one to the other. But yeah, this is about thinking about how I use my time. You know, I've, I've been entrusted with a life that has a certain amount of time. What am I doing with it? Uh, my relationships. How how uh, I've been entrusted with these relationships that I have. How how am I doing with them? Am I being a faithful steward of those relationships? And being sensible about those relationships. Yeah. So the question there for me is given what God has given me, what am I doing with it? And do I need to rethink some of the areas in my life that I have been entrusted with? Because, you know, I might be really faithful in giving. Of my, you know, with with my finances, but maybe not so much in what I'm focusing on and and, and doing elsewhere. He goes on to say, uh, you know, basically to drive the point home. Um, you know, Lord Jesus, he gets up there and says, if we aren't prepared and if we are not following our master's instructions, uh, and, and he makes it very clear, he says, for a servant who knows, knows what the master wants, but isn't prepared and doesn't carry out those in, instructions, uh, they will be, and you know, this is a bit of a, I'm not sure how, you know, severely punished as opposed to being lightly punished, which he's going to mention very shortly, you know, the difference in there on what was happening in Jesus' mind. But basically, this it's serious stuff that Jesus is saying. If if we're going to be good stewards and we know what God wants us to do and 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 we're not prepared to do it and we're not doing it, there will be consequences. Interesting enough, is, is the other thing Jesus makes the point that ignorance is not an excuse. Yeah. I don't know if you've tried that. Oh, sorry, officer, I didn't realize that it was a 60 kilometer zone rather than an 80 kilometer zone. Oh, well, you do now, sir. Here's your ticket. Ignorance is not an excuse. Yeah. But he says, but someone who does not know, the flip side is, but why don't you know? Why don't you know what your master requires? Why don't you know, you know what he expects? You know? But someone who doesn't know and that then does the wrong thing uh, will be punished only lightly. But it's still a punishment. 
And then he ends with this. When someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. I must admit, I cannot um, read that without thinking of Spider-Man. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. This is, if we have been given much, much is expected of us. In fact, when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. Yeah, again, going back to Jesus' example of the servants, you know, it, it wasn't just a case of give back what we've got. It was to use what we've been given in a way that would be in within the will of our master so being a good steward we need to realize that we are expected to be good stewards of what we have you know of good stewards of our life good stewards of our money our time our friends the resources the things we have and i go back to the beginning a good steward is faithful and sensible. A steward is faithful and sensible, has been given, the, has been given, whoops, there you go, there's my English coming out, should be responsibility to manage their master's household. If done well, it will lead to greater trust and responsibility. If done poorly, it will lead to punishment and rejection. I mean, that's what Jesus is basically saying. And he's challenging his hearers and his disciples, be good stewards. Now, I do like to try to give some suggestions of things that, you know, that might be helpful. And, and by the way, this is just this is the tip of the iceberg of, of areas that we might need to be working in and you can go explore. Um, uh, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry is a book by John Mark uh, Coma um, that I've been reading and finding excellent. Um, thinking about how I use my time and life. Uh, a classic would be uh, um, The Tyranny of the Urgent as well. Uh, you've probably, I mean, that's been around for quite a long time as well. That's about time. Uh, Dave Ramsey, Ramsey is about, you know, how to get out of economic hardships and be sensible with finances. Boundaries is about, you know, uh, which is um, Henry Cloud and John Townsend um, talking about within relationships and so forth. Uh, like I said, I, I just went and chose, you know, just a couple of quick areas. But we have access to so much resources that can help us to be good stewards with what we've been given. And, and really, I'm actually, won't, I'm going to go back. I wasn't playing. Oops, I went. Uh, there's a hint. There's a song coming up. I'm going to go back to this. We don't really have excuses for not doing what our master wants us to do, what our Lord wants to do. We have access to resources uh, to be able to do that. Can I say one of the greatest resources is sitting around you, uh, for those online, those who you're seeing online and around and are here today, it's one another. Uh, if If being together with other believers and talking about how to use the things that I have is such a great resource. To ask the questions of, you know, what do I do with this that God has entrusted with me uh, of those that we know and who, who know us? It's such a wonderful resource to be able to do what the Master is asking us to do, what our God, our Lord, our Saviour is asking us to do with the things he's entrusted us with. That was a bit of a plug there. The groups as well. But we have the resources. Can I say, please don't go away today and go okay i'll i'll do I'll, i think i might need to do something about that later because the reality is the world and the evil one and even ourselves will create enough distractions that we won't get to it later 
can I ask you, go have a look at David's prayer in 1 Chronicles 29. Ask God the question. Have that two-way conversation with him and say, what areas do I need to maybe reboot my faith in? Areas that you've entrusted me with something that I need to actually maybe do differently. I'll leave that in your hands with you and God to explore that further. So therefore, I'm going to pray. Lord, being... Actually, Father, I think actually all of us want to be good stewards of the things you've given us. Uh, there is that desire to, to please you. There is that uh, desire to, to do your will. Uh, Lord, we, we want to be like you. Uh, we want to follow your example. And, and Holy Spirit, thank you that you, you are with us to help us uh, in that process of becoming more Christ-like in our lives. I ask that you reveal any areas that we need to be working on, that we need to reboot, that we need to rethink about, we need to do differently so that we can be uh, the faithful and sensible steward. That we, we acknowledge that what we have is yours and we want to use it for your glory, for you. For you yeah, for your kingdom to be able to grow. And I thank you that you bless us so much uh, that, you know, you, you just pour out your blessings upon us. It's, it's truly incredible. So help us to embrace who you are and allow you to change us. So we do hear that words, those words one day. Yeah, well done, good and faithful servant, steward, who have I entrusted with so much. So, Lord, thank you for being our example. Thank you for being the one who we serve. And thank you for uh, allowing us to be able to come into your presence and through prayer, and then one day we will stand before you and give thanks to you for all that you have done in our lives. Praise you for that. Amen.